Laura, welcome to Halloween Daily. Thanks so much for hanging out and talking to us today. Hello. Thanks so much for having me. Well, I love Late Night with the Devil. We've been talking a lot about it here at Halloween Daily News, and it feels like everybody's talking a lot about it right now as we're recording this. It's in theaters here in the States. It's opening in Australia uh, tomorrow, I believe, and it's about to start streaming on Shutter next weekend. So it's, it's, it's a great time for this film. Everybody's talking about it. It's awesome. It's an amazing time for the film. It's so great to be part of something that is hitting the zeitgeist, the zeitgeist like this. Um, I think Colin and Cam Cairns, the directors, have just done an amazing job and I'm so happy for them. I'm happy for all of us. I think they really deserve it because they're fantastic and yeah, it's it's super fun. And um, as, as you might imagine, I love the Halloween of it all, of course, you know, it, it takes <laughs> place on Halloween night. And of course, we love that part of it. And I've been lucky we've had both your co-stars, Ingrid and David, here in the last few days. Oh, great. And, and they have very different relationships to the Halloween holiday itself. So I wanted to start with that, if it's all right, because um, we're always curious about the Halloween holiday. And of course, Ingrid growing up in Australia, where it's, it's not exactly what... It is here in the States, is very curious about it, but hasn't really celebrated much. Whereas David, on the other hand, you know, um, much more like us on the other end of the spectrum. So, so where, do you, <laughs> where do you land on, on Halloween, the holiday itself? And do you celebrate? What's it all uh, mean to you? Yeah, that's a cool, it's cool to have the three of us. I would say being Australian and yeah, I would probably fall more in Ingrid's camp. Um, I'm kind of surprised though, because I think that I can see a change happening in the, like this new generation, because she's a teenager. I would have thought that maybe she was more like totally into Halloween. So that's kind of interesting. When I was growing up, you know, the thing I remember is like, I'm, I don't even think it's my parents who said this, but it was just this, oh no, in America, they do trick or treat and people put razor blades in apples. Yeah, have you yeah. met like we were like oh yeah don't go and knock on people's doors because you know <laughs> so that's kind of the memory that sticks out for me I don't remember anyone really doing trick-or-treat except for maybe like four households would get together and those kids can go to those four doors it was right. kind of like that but I was in my hometown last Halloween and my nieces were they were doing it and I was super into it and then I went down to like the little playground area that I used to play in and there was a whole festival there were pumpkins oh, and cool. It was a thing. So I yeah. thought maybe Ingrid would be like, oh, yeah. but Yeah. Yeah. She said she she has some friends that, that have hmm. done the trick-or-treating and stuff, but she's definitely um, wants to get into it more. And uh, so I think maybe making this movie and, and talking to us maybe has, has inspired her to get into it more. But that's very cool to hear that when, when you went home that uh, yeah. they, they had stepped it up a little bit this by now. Yeah, no, they have for sure. Not and, like I've been in LA once and I was like, oh, right, this is next level. This is really, really next level. Right. <laughs> so it was like that. But they were right. trying. There you go. It was fun. And um, and uh, you mentioned that, you know, the, the razor blade scares and all. Yeah, I mean, I remember, you know, being a kid hearing, we didn't hear too much about it because I was so young, but, you know, in research, it being such a, a scare in, in the 70s and 80s, um, and I don't know how much of it was actually turned out to be true, but it was kind of like this, this scare that everybody, um, had for so a little while It was a thing there. that you heard about. It, it was a thing. I think, you it know. It was a wives was, tale or an urban legend? I think it was more stories than actual yeah. occurrences, but there, maybe there was like one and then all of a sudden it was like everybody was scared it was going to happen or had happened in their town. Um, yes. So, and also so, the other thing was we would hear about like if you didn't have treats, you get rotten eggs on your house or your toilet paper. So yes. everyone was like, well, we'll just put something out just in case. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's there's definitely definitely some of that, some trickery there. And uh, but um, but but yeah, in, in our neighborhoods, it they keep it pretty pretty well behaved these days at least. Yeah. But but yeah, there's been elements of that for sure. So, so that's very interesting. Now, do you, do you celebrate um, now as an adult at all? Do you do, you, uh, do anything for Halloween? Not really. No, yeah. um, it was fun, like going with the kids to sure. sort of do it and like maybe have a little bit of candy, um, or as we call we call them lollies. 
Have you heard that? Lolly? We don't really say candy or sweets. We say, can I have a lolly? Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, Yeah. well, I mean, I hear that. I think of a, a lollipop over here, like a, Yeah. Yeah. But not we kind really, of, it's but a, an all inclusive all encompass. the Okay. lollies. Yeah. Very interesting. Very But interesting. no, I haven't been to like Halloween parties and dressed Right. up as a nurse, but a cute nurse. No, I haven't done that. <laughs> well, there's there's still time. There's still time. That's Um, right. and with us, every day is Halloween anyway. So, um, and I love that we're talking about a Halloween movie, and it's April on the calendar, and and it's it's just awesome for us anyway. Yeah, we're ahead of the we're ahead of the game here. Definitely, definitely. So, um. When did you know that you wanted to act? Was this something early on that you uh, had a passion for? Or when did you realize this was um, where you wanted to go? Yeah, whenever people ask me this question, I can kind of never quite put my finger on it because I just remember always wanting to do drama. But I grew up in a, I grew up in Canberra, which is the capital of Australia, but it's not where there's any entertainment industry. And it wasn't like there was Instagram and, you know, so I couldn't see it so easily about how you would be part of it. But theatre, there was theatre and I would go up to Sydney and I would see plays at the Sydney Theatre Company and stuff. My dad would take me up there. So I always wanted to be part of drama class and I did a lot of theatre. I had an amazing theatre program in high school. Um, I do remember I saw a play, like an amateur play when I was about five, like really young. And I was just absolutely, I was I, I was gobsmacked and I went out and kept talking to everybody I met about the play. Like they knew what I was talking about. Like it was this kind of, you know, omnipresent thing that had happened to everybody. So maybe, maybe it was then, I don't really know, but um, it, early on. Yeah. But it wasn't until I was doing theater that I started to go, Oh, maybe I could be in film and television as well. That seemed like more elusive somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's, let's move into late night. I mean, this movie, like I said, it's definitely having a moment now and it, it's been a fun, we've been covering it since we first learned about it last year, right around its festival premieres and it started getting these great reviews Mm -hmm. And then it's it's just climbed and climbed, and it was word of mouth on the festival circuit. And then Stephen King tweeted about it, and so, and then the trailer came out, and it looked great. And now it's out, and everybody's loving it. Um, what was your first involvement with it, and how did you first become attached uh, to this project? So it was two years ago, almost winter in Australia. So it, it, yeah, it's coming up to two years ago that they shot it, and I was actually initially going to play Madeline. Minnie, Okay. the wife. Mm -hmm. Um, and I read the script and I just thought it, it leapt off the page. I thought it was fantastic. I was really into it. And so I was um, going to play that role. And then something happened with the actor really soon before we filmed. And so they called me up and said, do you want to play June? And I remember being like, hi, I think I can. That's a lot of lines in a very short amount of time. Um, but I was obviously, of course, I would love to. I I, I remember when I read the script thinking that was a fantastic role. Um, so yeah, it was kind of like I was part of it. And then I jumped on uh, to play June. I maybe had a week, but then I remember I got COVID. So I couldn't be part of any of the rehearsals. Um I was on Zoom doing the table read and meeting David and the directors on Zoom. And it wasn't until I think I had like a little fitting the day before I um, filmed. But my first day on set was like meeting everybody, which is kind of good because I didn't, I would have, you know, felt out like a fish out of water as June. She's not from Yeah. that world. She's not a talk show host. She doesn't know, you know, she's very much coming into this world. Um, and I got to spend some time with Ingrid on Zoom, kind of building that relationship. That was the... And David as well, because we do have a prior relationship that we did want to kind of flesh out a little bit. But Ingrid, I guess, our relationship was the one that had a significant backstory that we really wanted to kind of, yeah, work on before we met. So that's kind of how it all came about. Wow, that's that's very interesting that, um, yeah, you found out kind of at the last minute that you're going to be stepping into, um, I mean, because Minnie is a pivotal role, but yeah, June is, is such a big part of this uh, story. And um, for, for the audience that, that maybe hasn't seen it yet, and um, how would you describe the character of, of June? So June plays a parapsychologist who's been working with um, 
Ingrid's character, Lily, for a few years since she was um, rescued from this satanic cult of Abraxas um, in a very dramatic, fiery sort of showdown. And she believes that Lily is possessed by, if not the devil, a minor deity, some sort of a demon. Um, and she's written a book called Conversations with the Devil about, you know, this phenomena that's occurred in her life and to Lily and something she feels is that, you know, going to really once and for all prove the skeptics wrong, that there is such a thing as demons and the devil and possession is real. So she's met Jack Delroy, played by the amazing David Dismolton, um, in the film. And he's the host of a late night talk show called Night Owls. And he, he's trying to claw back the ratings. He's kind of, the show's not doing the best that it, it could. So he's doing this Halloween special where he wants to have like a live exorcism performed on stage. Um, so June, that's how she finds herself in this position with her young charge, Lily, um, on this fateful night. And and it is a fateful night. And a fateful I night. The, <laughs> I love the structure of the film too, being set on this show. And it's the five segments of the show essentially. And and each segment kind of ramps up a little bit more and you meet these other characters. Um, but June is such an interesting character because she's there, you know, um, she's written this book, you know, so there is the commercial aspect. And, and like you said, she's got this relationship with Jack, but, but, you know, she obviously cares for Lily. She's there to help this, this um this young girl and i love hearing that you guys did kind of work ahead of time um to deepen the bond a little bit with uh you and ingrid i mean um, yeah because i really i i like that whole that whole part of it that uh you know it's not your typical you know doctor where she's just cashing in on let's let's take her on this show she definitely you know had had uh you know some real pathos for the character i think that's what one of the things that drew me to the character. Yeah. Um, and I think it also kind of built them as we were filming, it sort of started to take shape, yeah. um, was that relationship, that very maternal instinct that she has for Lily. Um, I feel like we kind of really fleshed that out together. And I liked the, the real push and pull for June between wanting commercial success and kind of wanting to kind of have her book sell. And in a way she's kind of made a bit of a, a pact with the devil the way that Jack has, you know, yeah. like, and I think for her though, she's realizing as the night draws on that maybe actually her care and her like concern for the well being of this girl that is now like a daughter to her is more important than any of that. And so she's sort of in it and then really starting to second guess that. And she sort of needs Jack to be on board with her, but he's kind of, he's full steam ahead and she's starting to, I felt like at the start of the film, maybe because I it's alluded to, they've had something, you know, maybe she's thinking this can be something with him. And um, definitely through the film, she kind of starts to see him more clearly and realise that she doesn't want to be a part of that and she doesn't want to risk Lily's life and that's actually the thing that's most important for her. So that was kind of the, I guess, yeah, that pathos, that was what I found really interesting playing with that. And also the the persona that she has when she's on camera, on a talk show, and then getting to kind of find those moments where she's less sure of herself and starting to question it in the ad breaks. Um, I mean, all of the characters, I think, had a really, the actors and the, in the writing had a great opportunity there to sort of have their public persona versus their, their private, you know, truer self. Um, I think that's one of the things that makes it so interesting to watch as an audience. And Colin and Cam have done such a great job kind of really finessing that. Oh, totally. I, I agree. And I love that aspect too, that we get to stay with the characters when it goes to commercial break. You know, sometimes mm. some of these films, they might go to, you know, 70s style commercials, which is cool. But this one, it stays with the characters. And like you said, we do get to kind of see yet another layer of what's going on with each of them and some of their actual concerns. Um, I've watched it a couple of times now. I have seen sent us a screener That's and great. I'm going to wear it out because I've watched it a few times now and I've noticed things on rewatches because it is one of those type films, I think, that mm. um, that is still rewarding the more you rewatch it because it's uh, so many of those little details that, 
Colin and Cameron um, layered it with. To me, yeah. anyway, that's yeah. what I'm finding. Yeah, I think I just I think they're amazing. I think they've done such a great job. Like the script was fantastic, and what they then created in the edit was even blew me away beyond the script. But also, I just think they had the best environment on set. There was normally when you walk onto a set, there's an element of nerves and like, oh, you know, and and um, I don't want to say fear, but you know, like everybody doesn't want it to go badly like there's a kind of uh and then you can kind of settle into it a bit but I felt no nerves when I walked on that set and I don't think anybody else did and I think it's because of them because they're they're just they're so well researched they're so well like they've done all the work at home they've got such an easy rapport with each other um they trust everybody they gave actors a huge amount of freedom to play the fact that they had three cameras running all the time meant that you know we all had so much freedom to just go and go and go there was not cuts so they weren't kind of like now we're going to go back to the trailer and you know wait for a two-hour light change like we were just in it the whole time I think that really contributed contributed to it and also David as as the lead he kind of he really set the bar he was so good he didn't need he was on every take but he also you know when you're the lead of a show like your energy and like what you're putting out there is really setting the bar and I think he was just super lovely and warm and inclusive with the cast and the crew um and I think that really shows in the film definitely and it it, it is a great performance I mean all of you guys I thought the whole cast um really knocked it out the park and then and then to learn that you know it was shot in Australia the the cast yeah. All the cast, other than David, um, except for David, is Australian. And you would never know it watching it. It, it feels like a, a New York-produced late-night talk show in 1977 when you watch it. Yeah, I think, look, the um, the production design, the hair and makeup, yeah. the costume, they all did such a great job. And when you walked on set, it wasn't hard to imagine. Like, the suspension of disbelief kind of was like, oh, yeah, I'm on a talk show in the 70s. <laughs> this is really cool. <laughs> And I guess having, you know, so much of the cast and everybody there at once, like you said, because it had to be because they're running the, the multiple mm. cameras. Um, I think that would probably add to it, too, I imagine. Yeah, and it sort of made it feel a little more like you're on a theater tour or something yeah. all together or summer camp. I don't know, um, rather than everybody off in their trailers and then just coming on to do their bit and then disappearing again. We were much more of an ensemble which was I think that helped and it was it made it fun to do as well and I was curious ahead of time because it is so effectively uh recapturing the vibe of the 70s mm -hmm. did they give you did did uh, Colin and Cameron give you any like specific reference points or just research material ahead of time I know it sounds like you didn't have very much time ahead but were there any, yeah. like, just research points from that era to say, um, just to kind of, be, from the style and the look and the speech and just everything about it, the music that's being played, it's all on Yeah, we had a live right band. Now. It was so cool. Um, they did give me, I, there was a Dropbox with an extraordinary amount of um, research in it. Like it was so researched, they so which was great also because I didn't have the time to kind of go googling and so it was like okay download, um, and you know some of that was relevant to June and some wasn't. Um, the, the you know they definitely referenced like Don Lane and the Warrens. Um, I remember yeah. looking at them. Um, that sort of seemed to pertain a little bit more to June's character, but I also just felt like um, everybody did their job making it look and feel um like the 70s um and the script I thought June was really well written I liked I could hear her voice in the dialogue I it felt very authentic to me um so I I kind of went I don't have a lot of time I'm gonna look at all of this stuff they've done an amazing job collating it all it's so helpful and also their script is really good and I think she's written very specifically I did think a little bit about dialect just to make sure it wasn't too present day like like I didn't want to say like like you know <laughs> that like little things like that but um a lot of it was really in their writing I thought very cool and when you put on that costume and makeup that does a, a lot of the job for you you suddenly feel like you're in another era 
for sure. I, I, I imagine so. And then walking out there, like you said, onto that set where it's um, basically a, a 1970s TV set, it sounds like. Yeah, and you know, obviously with a film, you can't fully shoot in sequence. But this one, you could, the bones of it more they could. Like when you talk about the fight. So my first, my first scenes in the film were my first big scenes that I was filming. And it was relatively sequential in that way, which is a an absolute gift in film you never ever ever get to you're often walking on set and going oh we're shooting the last scene today hi nice to meet you you know <laughs> right. um so that was really fun that was good i was going to ask about that if it was shot more in sequence than usual and and you just answered that that it was because it seemed I mean, like it, it wasn't you know it wasn't completely but i do yeah. feel like in terms of my big character beats they yeah. mainly kind of did go one after the other and I have to ask you about um, one day behind the scenes because Ingrid and David have both brought it up separately. And when David brought some Chicago style pizza in oh, yeah. for everybody, uh, yeah. what, did did you enjoy it? What do you do? Do you like a Chicago style pizza? I guess I'll ask. Um, I love. I love it. I mean, yeah. it's cheesy carbs. Yeah. What's not to love? I had had it once before. Um, mm -hmm. Because it's kind of like, for me, it's like a pie. You know, they call it a pizza pie. Yeah. And I was like, this is like more pie than pizza because we have it more like a thin crust. So right. it's a different experience to me from eating like pizza pizza, but it's delicious. <laughs> and it was such a, like, I remember in the, the makeup um, chair, I would like hear him kind of trying to figure it out and talking to someone about like, and I was like, what is, oh, ooh. and I think he was really, I think he thought it was a really good, you know, approximation of Chicago pizza. Yeah. He, I he wish said, I could remember the restaurant. I'd give them a shout out, but um, I can't. <laughs> he said he, he went through a lot to to make it happen for sure. Mm. It wasn't, wasn't easy to, to get it there, I guess, but, but yeah. yeah, he made it happen. And sounds like it made, made a good impression on everybody. He did. Yeah. I think <laughs> everybody was really touched. So, so Ingrid said that was her favorite memory from the set. What was your favorite memory from the set of Making Late Night with the Devil? Um, gosh, it was such an enjoyable experience. It's hard to, I mean, I really, I'm trying to like spoiler alert. There's some, what do you call it? Practical, practical, like the, I'm trying to talk about something that I don't want to give away, like towards the end with, yeah. Lisa's character, Gus. Yes. There's some stuff that's happening, like, for real that I thought was amazing. And the fact that, you know, when you've only got so many takes because they've, like, spent hours kind of setting something up, um, the electricity in the room when you know that they've only got two goes at this um, is so fun and exciting and nerve-wracking that I, I really enjoyed that and it just looked so cool. But I can't talk about it properly because I don't want to talk about it if someone hasn't seen it. <laughs> so that's probably a very strange answer. Well, I know what you're talking about. I know exactly. Yeah. I think everybody that has seen it knows the scene you're talking about in the, in the climax. And and yeah, we could always put up a, a spoiler warning if we want to um, go into that territory yeah, and no, people not. Can, can come back. But yeah. But I know exactly what you're talking about, and um, and yeah, that I know what you mean about the electricity, and I guess that kind of captures what what it would have been like on that night in '77 on the show yeah. as things are progressing to that point, not quite to that point, but right to almost to that level as well. Yeah, yeah, I I because I'm trying to think. I I think I was just watching behind the monitor because for some of it we weren't. I just wanted to watch. I remember being like, I'm just going to not go to the dressing room. I want to watch this. This is amazing. Yeah. And I just thought Reese was so great. And yeah. he hadn't done a film before, I think. He, um, who plays Gus, he's an improvised, like an improv guy, comedy guy. And I was like, wow, you've never been in a film before. You're amazing. I just thought he did such a great job. Yeah. Yeah, he he was great. Probably, I'm sure it won't be his his last film now. No, no, um, not at all. Yeah. So, what was your reaction when you finally saw the finished film for the first time? What was your own uh, reaction to it? I took 
it took a long time for me to get to see the film because I kept being in the wrong country at the wrong time. <laughs> um, so I missed South by, I missed the Melbourne Film Festival. Um, and then I was back in Australia at the end of last year and Matt, the beautiful producer and the directors, they were like, let's do a little screening. So I got to see it in Melbourne in this beautiful little um, cinema that I'd never been to. That was like an old gas station that has been turned into a cinema. Of like, I think you can maybe put 50 people in there. And it was so much fun to watch it with an audience for the first time. Um, you know, sometimes you get a screener or you're just like in ADR getting most of it and kind of, and it's not, you don't, but the, that was really fun. And I just, I felt really proud to be part of it. I just, I thought, gosh, they've really nailed the brief and then some. And then I got to see it um, in New York uh, last month at IFC. And that was like a Q&A screening that I did with David. But with people, it was a sneak peek screening, but people had bought tickets. So they wanted to be there and they were all horror fans. And that was amazing because the gasps and the laughs and the... The, like Twitters that went out around the audience. I was like, oh, like watching it with 50 people from Melbourne who were like friends and family and people in the industry, they really loved, they loved it. But then this was a next level kind of um, communal experience that I hadn't really experienced before. Um, and it was really fun. <laughs> it was really fun to feel, because I feel like this is made for the audience and to see it on a big screen these days is rare like everything is on streaming and I think it's going to be amazing on streaming by the way but it is a treat to see it um in a full theater with people who are like-minded and really appreciated the genre and so much of it and um yeah that kind of was next level yeah and its success has kind of been next level I mean IFC it's been their their biggest theatrical release yet it sounds like and um and the the reaction both from critics and just from audiences it sounds like it's been pretty unanimously positive from what i'm hearing anyway yeah so, it seems pretty spectacular yeah i think everybody who's a part of it feels really like lucky and grateful and yeah i'm so happy for colin and camp particularly because it's it's came out of their brains and they made it happen and they worked on it for years and they've just done a wonderful job they definitely did and and like i said all you guys um did a great job in and just Thank capturing you. the whole vibe and everything um what uh are there any upcoming projects that we can look forward to seeing you in that you could talk about or, or plug yeah, so I have a, a TV series that is launching this summer on June 16th on M MGM Plus called Hotel Cocaine, which incidentally is also set in the late 70s. So um, I'm being typecast, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's set in Miami and it's a great, it's going to be great. I'm really excited about it. So that's on MGM Plus. Okay. And you said that's coming out this summer? June 16th. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Well, I'll definitely be looking for you in that, and, and I'm sure our audience will be looking forward to watching that as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. And again, if people have not seen Late Night with the Devil, I can't recommend it high enough. Like I said, I've watched it a couple times now, and, and I love it. And, um, and this has been awesome, just hanging out and getting to know more about you and, and um, yeah. where you're coming from with all this. I, I think June is is, um, like I said, just a fascinating character in the middle of all this craziness of this Halloween night episode of Night Owls. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Well, this has been great. And um, every day is Halloween for us, and we always hate to say goodbye, but instead that's why we just say happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. <laughs> <laughs>